sitting in class. It's an all too familiar headache in secondary schools. Tapping on the desk, drumming with their pencils, just constant. It's very annoying, and I actually use that word. Can you stop tapping, please? It's really irritating. It's really annoying for the people around you. It can undermine even the best planned lessons. They don't realise they're doing it, and I think that's part of it. They just don't realise I'm tapping, it's irritating. People's trying to talk, someone's trying to listen. John Bailey's visiting two fidgety Year 7 classes in North London to see if he can help with the constant shuffling of hands and feet. He's working with historian Louise Cooper from Bishop Stopford School. From Britain. Good, OK. So and English teacher Emma King from Turin Grove. Both have experimented with seating plans, but it hasn't made much difference. What did you find in your research? Did you find anything on him? It's near the end of the school okay, year, and John's brought the two together to swap ideas. Do you remember our discussion? What did we say? And we talked about how there is some conflict in that region at the moment. All this fiddling, who is the problem for? Whose problem is it? I think it does annoy the people around them yeah. to, to sit through a whole class and, and hear the tapping. If that's, and and yeah. sound, I would count as bothering yeah. someone else. Yeah. That's a really good answer because it is true that, we, um, that there are some children, we ask them about classrooms, they say, I like it, but I hate it when it's noisy and there are other people mucking about. And so, and so with that group, there will be days when it impedes your teaching significantly. Definitely, and you'd spend sort of much longer on uh, behaviour and dealing with behavioural issues than you would teaching your lesson. What we're going to do next is we're going to have... A... Louise has tried burning off excess energy with a technique borrowed from primary schools. OK, ready, 70. It's green or it's white, it's on your desk, it says the Crusades on the top. Can we look at it, please? You Emma, this isn't your class, it's Louise's. What features do you notice about it? As soon as Louise did the musical transition, which is really cool, <laughs> I like that. They all kind of were like, oh yeah, we know what we're doing. OK, I do have a starter task on the I do a lot of primary activities with the Year 7s because it just works with them. They are so... Uh, energetic, they love the musical transitions and the sort of things that you do with <laughs> younger groups. They love it in Year 7 still. Right, have a look at your little laminated cards. Ali, what do you think we're doing? Bingo. We're doing bingo, excellent, OK. Emma's tactic is to try to absorb the fidgetiness early on with a lively starter. Another word for facts and figures. It's also something that you do in maths. Begins with an S. Facts and <laughs> figures. <laughs> They're all on task and focus, but I think it looks like they want your attention. Mm. Some of the children just want that teacher attention. Mm. And they sort of, you know, were wanting to grab it in any way they could, be it good or bad. Yeah, I'd agree. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they want the touch of a teacher's eye. <laughs> OK, good, thank you, guys. Thank you, Star. Thank you, Ishmael. Once your hand goes up, your mouth closes. OK, now, <laughs> I, was, I was interested in, in, in putting in that last clip because um, one of the things that I notice is they, in fact, they respond pretty well to all your signals and devices. So if you put your hand up, they'll put their hand mm. up. If you do, yeah. Mm. Uh, both of you were able to bring the room back under control where you wanted to. <laughs> I wonder what percentage of this is to do with in remembering that with children with this age that we need to be doing a lot of very explicit uh, direction. And mm. it is the, a lot of the hands, knees and bumpsy daisy commands as well mm. as the um, reflecting on, on, on their rights and responsibilities. Mm. Yeah, I think a lot of the solution does come from teacher's command. So actually instructing the hands, um, instructing them so that they're not fidgeting. Because, you know, it's like when you've got someone who's not looking at the board, face the front, or can you move your shoulders so they're facing the board? 
to instruct the part of the body. So I think that's something I'd work on. Yeah, I'd agree but with that. Quite a few of them, when you point out, when you say, yeah. you know, you need to stop that, they'll be like, oh, yeah, OK. You're going to imagine now you've got to write your speech. If we get time at the end, we're going to hear the speeches. If we don't get time at the end, we'll have to do it next lesson, OK? Is that all right? You've done a journey this okay. far. Right. So, what would you do next? I think I would get them to kind of monitor themselves more and find a way to get them to take more responsibility for themselves so that mm. they are self correcting rather than relying on me to kind of go shh, shh, shh and to quiet them down. It might be nice this time of year to have a meeting with a class. That is to say, have a proper structured class conference. Mm. Um, I think, I I think, think that's yeah. a great way to finish off the year, just mm. to review how we've been this year. I mean, I don't know if you're going to take your class through to next yeah. year, but I think that would be really useful if you were to take your Key Stage 3 class through to Year 8. Um, you know, the continuity would be there, so something like a conference would be really useful. Yeah. Um, and I think it would sort of raise their issues, which you're not aware of. Yeah, and I think it would be, because quite often we'll have... You'll have conversations with other teachers or other mm. adults about them, and very rarely do you say with them, this is the issue, or even if it's not an issue, this is what I've noticed about us as a class and how we learn together. I think that definitely those Year 7s would be very able to do it and would enjoy reflecting on and thinking about themselves and how they learn. A few days later, Emma has the chance to try out two new strategies. Taking John and Louise's advice, she's going to give more explicit instructions and hold a class conference. OK, guys, let's um, look this way and put our pens and pencils down so that we know we're listening. Thank you. The aim of the conference is to raise pupils' self-awareness of their behaviour. I have given you a slip with your name on and it also has a number, OK? I'm going to tell you where to go for which number you have because you're going to work in groups, OK? As soon as I've told you to move, you go to where I've told you to and then sit down and face me. OK, guys, sit down in your groups as soon as you're in your groups. Well done, Manuela's groups. Well done, Luke. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Manuela. Thank you, Azam. Thank you, Mr Bailey. Thank you, Sadar. OK, excellent, guys. I have written 15 things that you are good at. Her strategy is to get the Year 7s to discuss behaviour generally before highlighting the fidgeting. You're going to write 15 more things on this sheet in your group that you think you're good at, but they're more about how you approach your learning rather than the actual things that we've learnt. You OK, Ishmael? You okay? Yeah, cool. Okay. So let's just quickly. John also wants to see if the pupils will start to think about taking responsibility for their actions. Using punctuation. That's what you've improved, I think. What about the things about how you are in the lessons? Um, we are quiet sometimes, but we can improve that. Like, persuasive language. Yeah. Like, emotive language. Yeah, right now. We have respect for each other and the teacher, basically. We work good as a group. Well, like, teamwork then. Let's have all our hands up. Ishmael. Ishmael. Oh. <laughs> Let's have all hands up. <laughs> One last thing before you prepare your little reports in your groups is um, I've got some ideas about what we could improve. Okay. So now there's been time to okay. reflect. Emma hopes they're ready to tackle the fidgeting issue head on. That's how you learn. I think these will help you learn even better. Ishmael, show me that you're listening. Put your face towards me. Okay. Not bothering each other in lessons. What I mean by bothering is not kind of, you know, like annoying each other and kind of like throwing your pencil at someone and then going, they threw my pencil. <laughs> right. I've got something really important that I'm not sure if we've fully covered in what we've been saying about what's good and what we could improve, OK? And it's happening now while I'm talking to you and I have the evidence in my hand, which is fidgeting. <laughs> OK, this is what you've been doing to your pieces of paper while I've been talking to you. <laughs> Is I did. Um, shh, 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 shh. This one is an, is, is an impressive one. <laughs> <laughs> the point I'm making.
making is a really important one, okay? And the reason is I understand fidgeting, okay? And actually... <laughs> put it out of your hand. Do you want me to have it? No. Put it out of your hand. <laughs> okay. The point with fidgeting is... I understand why it happens. I understand sometimes you're listening and you want to... And you want to kind of have something in your hands. I understand where that comes from, OK? But the point is, sometimes it gets to the stage where the person next to you is distracted and they're looking away from the teacher. And it's, to, it's also things like rocking back on your chair. All these things, to me, come under this category of fidgeting. And what I mean by that, sit properly, what I mean by that is movements that distract other people from focusing on the teacher, OK? Because this is about learning, OK? So if we empty our hands and we don't fidget with things, you're not doing anything that I would class as naughty. And it doesn't make me think less of you at all, because I'm a natural fidget. I'm just saying, think about what you can do to stop yourself, Ishmael, oh. from fidgeting. The first thing, I think, is, it, is knowing when you're doing it, isn't it? Sorry, I want to say. And you stop the class, like you make, like you stop us, and then yeah. it stops other people from it's, doing stuff. It stops the lesson, doesn't it? So it's really annoying for you guys to stop the lesson. So don't rock on chairs, don't fidget. Um, a Dems group. Um, in Miss Medine's class, we have to put everything on the side of the table so we don't touch it. Good. So we could push things away. Good. So I want everybody to have on their list what can we do about fidgeting, OK? Stop One fidgeting. more... <laughs> and not just write the word stop <laughs> fidgeting. Push objects away from me. Good idea. One more minute, guys. I'll see you about fidgeting and then I'm going to take your feedback. Despite raising awareness of fidgeting, it's going to be a long battle to change behaviour. It was quite interesting that even though I'd, well, I'd gone on, I thought, about fidgeting quite a bit, and then straight away people were fidgeting. Children making helpful contributions about fidgeting while they're st stabbing um, <laughs> uh, a rubber. We really shouldn't fidget, sir. So it's a kind of deep habitual behaviour. Yeah. So this is just part of a process, isn't it? Yes, yeah. And did I spot earlier in the lesson that you're also a bit more explicit with your... You're yeah. being a bit more explicit with your expectations as well. Yeah. And that's been working really well, because it is very explicit. Telling them precisely what you want to do with the part of their body that you want them to do it with is very effective. They can't get confused, and it's, it's not vague or idiomatic. It's not like... You should be listening. Is I suppose some children are quite vague, where I show me your face, empty your hands or put your pen down. It's far more explicit, and they do. I'm just thinking about social and emotional aspects of learning and all mm. that. Um, yeah, here you are talking with them about growing up and how you work and how they feel about you and each other and mm. all that. It's kind of the essence of SEALs, isn't it? That's, yeah. That's, you know, yeah. That's really what it's all about. You can already see there's different ways in which you can crank up the tension and they can be short, they can be long, mm. all sorts. Yeah, I think I'll definitely do it again and make changes. And I think it was the very first stage of making them understand, A, that they do it, and B, the impact it will have on them that will result in greater learning.